ideas for the present, dreams for the future. Your imagination holds the key. Walt Disney once said, the era we live in is a dream come true. But there are still plenty of avenues to explore. The Disney Channel invites you to join us now and imagine. In the year 1540, this map offered a lot of people their first glance at the New World's geographic mysteries. The only problem was, North and South America didn't really look like this. Would you trust this map? It's one of the first maps depicting the continental United States, coast to coast. And, according to this one, you can sail all the way around California, because it's an island. A map made 400 years ago shows something called the West Sea, where Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and part of California actually are. Today, most of us take accurate maps for granted. We tend to lose sight of the incredible challenges that making a map involves. After all, maps are views of a place from above, and people didn't start getting on top of the world until quite recently. From the ground, the sandy shoals of North Carolina look like this. Seen from above, they look like this. Quite a difference. Then there's the matter of distance. It's a fairly simple thing to measure distance on a flat surface. Add a few of the Earth's ups and downs, and it gets a lot harder. No wonder early travelers describe things as the crow flies. Do you recognize this map? Well, this was one of the first maps depicting the state of California, and was made in 1888 by an early geologist named Edward Douglas. Douglas didn't have the opportunity to go up in an airplane and actually see the land formations, and he didn't have the modern tools that we have at our disposal today, but still, he managed to make a pretty accurate map. This is the United States Geological Survey, the agency responsible for making the official maps of our country. Over one million different maps are made here for just about every application you could imagine. Why, in this rack alone, there are maps from Arbuckle to Baghdad. Dick Zorker is the head of the topographic mapping department. Today we use aerial photographs, we use satellites, a lot of different people, a lot of different kinds of talent, and uh, many hours of work and rework. No matter what we use it for, a map is made for information, and the more information it gives us, the better. Maybe that's why topographical maps are the most commonly used maps of all. Today, a topographical map begins with a series of aerial photographs of a given site. The site's ups and downs, its topography, are created when these pictures are processed in a machine called a stereo compiler. It compares one picture with the next and calculates the relative altitudes of things on each. Then it connects common elevations with lines. The patterns these lines create show us a portrait of hills, valleys, and plains. Later, field surveyors provide a critical check of the compiler's accuracy. Next, all that information has to be translated into the drawings themselves. And if you've ever tried to follow a map on tracing paper, you can appreciate the job of the negative engraver. He has to follow each tiny detail on the negative plates by hand. One false move, and a river in Idaho could suddenly flow into Colorado. Once the engraver has finished, the map is ready to photograph, and a new principle comes into play, scale. Seen from the Earth, the moon seems as big as a baseball. Of course, it's actually thousands of miles wide. In mapping, scale works the same way, enabling us to shrink things to a manageable size. By adjusting this giant copy camera, map makers can adjust the scale of their final product. The film that records this photo will be used to make the actual paper print, the one people will rely on to get from here to there. Any dust or scratches left at this point will become a feature on the map. That's why this final check is so important. 
Nobody headed for St. Louis wants to wind up at the tail end of a stray hair, and with today's maps, nobody does. But the violent forces of nature are continually reshaping the geography of our Earth, so map making is changing too, right along with the times. This, believe it or not, is a map. It is the raw data of geographical references recorded in the numerical language of the computer. The computer is capable of replacing traditional paper maps with digital maps, storing vast amounts of information in its electronic memory. Today, the computer helps us in that we put the information into the computer and it's stored in the database. At any time, we can call that information out and we can generate a finished product very fast. Our environment is changing every day. And just as fast as that those changes take place is our need for information about those changes. And we need to record that information and make it available to the cartographic community. The computer allows us to do that. By having all the information stored in a database, we're able to go back and just change certain portions of that information. When Mount St. Helens erupted, the U.S. Geological Survey sent out a team of surveyors to inspect and measure the incredible changes. Within days of the eruption, the new shape of the mountain was portrayed in a map, a map shaped by the map maker's newest tool. Most of the maps we'll see in the future would have taken years to prepare in the past. Now they're becoming common, thanks to the computer. Each time people venture beyond their familiar surroundings, they've turned the unknown into the known. But the real challenge has always been how to share what we've learned with others. And the answer has been maps. Not just any map, but better maps. The science of cartography has brought us a long way from the day when all we had to go on were a few tentative scribbles. But the best part is still to come, because there's more to find on today's maps than we may realize.